<laughs> oh, wow. Am I live? I'm just going to hang till I'm live. Oh, yeah. It's happening now. We're 10 seconds deep. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. Coming up here. Uh, well, hello and good evening, everybody. My name is Chuck Cassidy. Thank you for joining me on this lovely Thursday evening. I'm coming to you live from Wolf Dog Bus's headquarters. This is up in uh, northern Washington. And, uh, you know, we had the sun for a moment. It was cool. I don't know if you're familiar with Washington, but it's cloudy up here. So that was, that was a nice thing. Uh, welcome to my live. I'm going to just kind of talk and ramble for a minute while we get people tuning in here. I'm going to take a look. Uh, I got my computer over here. Uh, to keep an eye on the live chat, you know. We've got some familiar faces. We got, uh, we got Gordo from Earth. What's up? Oh, dude, you should be a moderator. Can I just make you a moderator? Yep, you're a moderator now. What a cool guy. Uh, <laughs> Gordo is going to be joining me at the bus fair this, this June. Uh, who else do we have in here joining us at the bus fair? Uh, hopefully Bart. What's up, Bart? Hopefully you'll be uh, making it to the bus fair. I know you're a working man. You got a lot of stuff going on. Um, we got, oh yeah, we got Bus Life Adventure. That is, that's my friend Brock, who's going to be live with us. And of course, Bus Life Adventure is the, the core of the bus fair. It's put on by Bus Life Adventure. Um, we've got Zoe Johnson. Jo Zoe, hey, what's up? Uh, Zoe uh, is going to be one of the two people who are speaking on my seminar about safe driving, you know, because uh, Zoe and her partner are professional truckers. Like they know that world really well. So, hey, if you come to the bus fair, you could get it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Zoe, not to call you a horse, but you know, it's an expression. Uh, who else do we got? Oh, we got Jess, we got the painted buffalo coming in. Jess, what's up? Freaking A, uh, she is my campaign manager, um, what other titles do you have, Jess? I don't know. I'm always on the campaign trail, you know? Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? <laughs> oh yeah, this is awesome. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, we could probably turn off the music at this point. But uh, today is a really special um, day around Chuck Cassie World Headquarters because in today's live, we've got a special guest and that guest is gonna be Brock Butterfield. He is he has become and is now a good friend of mine in the bus world, and I'm really excited to have him on here. I'm gonna ramble for just a couple more minutes because I hope that we can get that number watching. We're only at like 50 right now by my count. I'd love to get that up a little bit before we bring Brock in, you know? Um, but in the meantime, uh, if you're just joining me, my name's Chuck Casty. Welcome to my live stream. I have spent the last nine or 10 or 50 million years converting school buses into tiny homes and various other things. And this is my week, weekly. It's not really weekly. I try to do it weekly. This is my live chat. <laughs> and we've got Brock Butterfield joining us. I've got a very special tool du jour that I just got a couple days ago. I'm really excited about it. And we're gonna just have a general kind of Q&A for a while. And we're gonna talk about an event called the Bus Fair. It's happening in Oak Ridge, Oregon this June from the 21st to the 23rd. And there's a lot of details about that, but if you're into the bus life thing, if you're into the school world, or if you're just getting started, especially if you're just getting started, the bus fair is an event you should know about. Uh, not only is it a time to connect with the community, but there is a whole day of seminars that I'm putting together led by myself and other industry experts <laughs> in their fields. And I'm not gonna ramble too much about that because I think what we need to do here, um, who else is in here? Yeah, 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 okay, awesome. Oh, we got Alex. So we got Nomadic Alpha, my, uh, my other friend. I've got friends, if you can believe it. Um, Alex, uh, he has one of my favorite rigs, honestly. And he's like, he's awesome to talk to because we can just go full nerd. Like me and Alex and Gordo, you get us together, you know, in a room and then give us a problem to solve or something to riff on and talk about. And I think we could, like a wind-up doll, like the monkey that just, you know, claps the cymbals. That would be us. We could just go for hours. Good to see you here. Good to see everyone here. Um, all right, so enough of that. If you're just joining us, welcome. We're gonna bring in Brock Butterfield. So Brock is a good friend of mine. I don't know when I first met Brock. I think it was, well, was it 
one of, it was at the second location that our shop was at. So it had to be sometime, I think, before 2018. Um, he came over, we hung out, we knew each other. And um, he, did, he, he did some repair on his rig in the parking lot of my shop. Dude had all his tools. He was like, I just need a place to do it. And uh, yeah, and the, we've been buds ever since. And of course, we, have, we found out we have mutual friends, interests. And now here we are. He puts on a festival every year called the Bus Fair in his hometown of Oak Ridge, Oregon which is really beautiful. And I am now an, sort of an official part of the team that helps put on that festival. And I am putting together the day-long series of seminars where we are running eight seminars with myself and lots of other people who are talking about various subjects. We've got camping, we've got live music, we have a lot of bus exhibitions. You can tour completed buses, works in progress. Um, there's a judging category where we give out awards. And there's just a whole lot of hanging out. And there's a dance party. I mean, like, it goes on and on. So without further ado, everybody, give a, give Chuck, Ca give a Chuck Cassidy welcome to my good friend, uh, Brock Butterfield. Hopefully, he's still in the green room. Is he, are you in the green room, Brock? Oh, yeah, there you are. We're going to bring you right in. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Brock Butterfield, uh, <laughs> without further ado, um, thank you very much for being here, Mr. Brock Butterfield. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to try split screening. Let's see if we can split screen oh. you in here. Yeah, that would be cool, right? Um, we should test the audio too. Can you hear me? <laughs> can everybody hear Brock? Let's see if we can bring him in. Um, we're going to add him to the left. There we go. We're split screening. Um, if you are tuning in in the live chat situation, let me know if you can hear Brock. Brock. Tell us about who you are and the bus fair, and um, we'll see if any, everyone can hear you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny because I feel like half the people that are here in the uh, in the room already <laughs> already know me, <laughs> and they're probably they've heard this story too many times. But yeah, I'm Brock. Um, I, I started Bus Life Adventure uh, many moons ago, probably 2014, and it was based around my need as a professional snowboarder to uh, have a way to travel in the winter and not spend a bunch of money on rent. So yeah. found a four-wheel drive short school bus and converted that. I made a little documentary that's on uh, YouTube called Life in the Bus Lane. And uh, from there, it, it turned into like people asking a lot of questions of like, where did you buy your bus? And how did you insulate it? Where did you get that wood stove? So then Bus yeah. Life Adventure turned into like a resource website slash Instagram. Um, and then people started asking, you know, hey, what type of schoolie events are going on? And I only knew of a couple and they were just mostly meetups. But people were looking more for like educational aspect and just a little more of a, a, an organized event for schoolies. And yeah. that's kind of where the light bulb went off in my head. And I was like, I could probably do something like this. So. I mean, here we are. Uh, we started the first one in 2019. 2020, we got squashed by COVID and had to halt for a bit. And then we brought it back again last year, um, which was a lot of fun. We went from one day to three days. We added the educational seminars. You were there teaching uh, a I few of there. them. Yeah. yeah. And here we are, like, just months away. Like, dude, we are months away from the next bus fair. And... I've got so much to do. I'm like, I don't know how this is going to happen, but uh, we're going to make yeah, it happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're three months away. And it is, it's a really awesome, it's just an awesome festival. And what is really cool, um, so it happens on the solstice, right? And yep. uh, I think we got some full moon action happening. Um, yeah. Is that true? Is it solstice? Full yeah. Moon? Full so moon, and then you've moon. got Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. They're all going to be in retrograde or, or oh, something. I'm, I'm kidding. I don't really know. <laughs> uh, there's not going to be a lot of nighttime to be had, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, it's going to be a pretty bright situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so uh, a little bit about the bus fair and why it was started. I guess I should talk about that. You know, the idea yeah. came to start it, but... Um, I live in this little small town of Oak Ridge, Oregon right now, and it was really big in the sawmill industry, and then the, the mills closed down. The town went from about 9,000 people in population with three car dealerships, 13 churches, 15 bars, 
and then all of a churches? sudden, yes, yeah, down to uh, down to just three grand, three three thousand people. So the economy just tanked. Um, so the town has been struggling with like revitalizing the economy here, and it's always can, kind of been tourism based. They're very well known for their mountain biking, um, and just right in the middle of the Willamette National Forest. So there's a lot of recreation here. And I realized that with this idea of having an event, I could help the community by bringing people from out of town to come simulate the local economy for a weekend. So staying in hotels, Airbnbs, going to the pub, the bakery, the coffee shop. So those are kind of my two goals when I started the event. Support the nomadic and schooly community um, with a gathering that's a lot of fun, has an educational aspect, and a way for people to meet others that are in the schooly lifestyle, uh, yeah. lifetime friends. And then the other was <laughs> to support the local community of Oak Ridge and try to put you know a little bit of money in the local businesses here by people coming out of town from out of town. So and it's working. I mean, <laughs> last year. We, we ran a, a report with Travel Oregon and we found out that we, uh, the bus fare was able to bring in over $41,000 to town in our local economy last year. So it's, yeah. that's amazing. That's awesome. That's really awesome. And if you haven't been to Oak Ridge, Oregon, uh, coming to Oak Ridge, Oregon in the middle of the summer is a really nice thing to do because the temperatures are darn near perfect. Um, the days are really long. And if you like the outdoors, there's like infinite things to do. And even right next to the bus fair, for example, the, uh, the park where it happens, it's right next to, what river is that? Is that the Willamette River? And so you've got the four rivers that make the Willamette right there. So that's okay. the middle fork of the Willamette. Yeah, it's got that great swimming hole, which is, that's probably where you were going with that. Oh, that's where I was going because we were we were swimming. We were cold plunging because that water is still, uh, it's pretty brisk, but honestly, it was a whole lot of fun. Uh, people were doing that multiple times. And well, also right there. That. Yeah. <laughs> and because... like right there too, that's where we were partying uh, in the woods, you know, with uh, the late night dance parties that we had going yeah. on. Yeah. Oh, that was fun. Yeah, that river actually comes out of the bottom of the dam of the reservoir. So that's why it's so cold. <laughs> if you take a little walk over to the other river, the Salmon Creek that comes in by the other side of the park, right. that's, that's a few degrees warmer. <laughs> so you've got your options. You can choose the yep. temperature of your plunges. One day, yep. Brock and I were talking about one day making uh, some type of like sauna bus, you know, so that yes. you could have this holistic kind of bus themed health spa at the bus fair you know you could do your yeah. hot saunas your cold plunges like yeah. really that's nice <laughs> so why we're talking about it's literally parked outside let's see if we can give people a view i don't know i don't know if this will work but there it is little 94 7.3 idi and that's the one that we're kind of talking about you know <laughs> Maybe turning into the Basana. So yeah, we'll see. That's a fun the, project. That is a fun project. Uh, me and Brock need 30-hour days to do all of the things <laughs> we have ideas for, I think. <laughs> Maybe yeah. even longer than that, honestly. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so the bus fair is uh, an event that is multiple days in duration. And the, uh, the day that I am helping the most on is Friday. Friday we have a whole day of seminars that we're putting together and if you're interested in the schooly lifestyle, if, if you're just getting started, maybe you've already done it or maybe you're just curious about it, um, the seminars, we have eight different seminars that we're doing all on various topics that are applicable to bus life. I wonder if I can remember them all right now. Let's see. We've got oh, uh, choosing... Please. Yeah, let's see if I can do it. Choosing the perfect bus, and right now we have Tony from AAA Bus Sales who is hopefully gonna come and attend. He's a really busy guy. I've got him on the line, but you know, you gotta reel him in carefully. Uh, we got choosing the perfect bus, and then we've got um, driving the bus, which is going to be led by uh, Zoe and AJ, who are professional uh, truckers. Like They have probably way more miles under their belts than any of us. Uh, operating big vehicles. Then we've got uh, Bus Maintenance 101, which I'm going to be teaching. Then we've got, I think, Floor Plan 
coming up. Yeah, there, layout somewhere. and design. Yeah, floor plan, layout, and design. And hopefully, mm -hmm. my boy Kyle Volkman is going to be the one teaching that. I'm uh, I'm talking to him, but uh, he's he's another legend and a, a dear friend of both of ours. And then yeah. after that, we've got uh, solar. We got some solar yeah. stuff happening with uh, Garrett from AM Solar. Hopefully, Garrett can make it. If not, someone from AM Solar will be there. Um, yeah. And I might step in for a few parts of that too. We'll see. Um, then after solar, we've got Luke and Wes. Uh, Luke from schoolie.com, friggin' legend. And Wes from Transcend Existence and Dark Wolf Artisans out in Wichita. If you watch my channel, you've seen me. I go out. He did the paint job on my bus. Uh, I'm out there all the time hanging out with Wes. And they're going to be teaching uh, Rivet Slaying 101, I think is what it's called. <laughs> yep. But basically, metal fabrication, roof raise tips and tricks. Um, and I should mention, all these seminars have a Q&A period built into them. So you're going to get the presentation and have a chance to ask questions. And then after the roof raise deal, we got uh, Alyssa at Regretless. She's coming in with, um, what's the, uh, your best life on the road? Is that the name of it? Yeah. It's, it's something like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, where she's going to be, she's got years under her belt of time on the road. And especially as a solo female with, you know, she's got a lot to teach about things like traveling safely if you're by yourself, especially uh, if you're a female, you know, like there's all these different tips and tricks, where to fill your water, all that stuff. And then one that I'm really excited about, which is a bit new, is the, the last seminar that we're doing is, it's called the Pros Corner, but basically all of us are going to do essentially a show and tell where we talk about all of our favorite uh, tools, tips, tricks, you know, all of the things that you can't just Google that if you know about can make your life so much easier, but finding that information is really hard. And I have no idea what people are gonna bring to the table with that, but that's gonna be a really good one. And that's a whole day of seminars. It's gonna be freaking awesome in a tent. We're gonna be hanging out, you know? And, uh, and we even have a panel for the following day. That'll be open to everyone. But if you want that information, you gotta buy the freaking tickets to the seminar. And you almost can't afford not to. You know what I'm saying, Brock? Like, you yeah. want to tell them about the deal if you buy the seminar tickets? Yeah, and I should probably mention to everybody that if they are interested, like, our ticket prices do go up on April 1st, oh. and that's not a joke. That's, that's not a joke. So they do increase. So right now you can get your educational seminar ticket for 200 bucks. It goes up to $250 um, on April 1st. Uh, but that's like the best bang for your buck, in my opinion, for the event, because educational seminar tickets get you the whole day Friday where, uh, as Charlie said, you go through all these seminars, but you also have private access to up to 30 different schoolies, the exhibitors that we bring in. So during the break times of the seminars, you can wander around and go through these buses, talk to the owners, and you don't have to fight the crowds of the general public that come in the very next day. So it's like exclusive for you. And we only sell so many seminar tickets because we want to make sure everybody has enough time to be able to rub elbows with Chuck and the rest of the uh, seminar <laughs> leader and then talk to all the other, you know, exhibitors there. But if you buy more than one seminar ticket, you get a discount. Anybody that buys a seminar ticket gets discounted camping. And then you have all access to the event the after hours party and Sunday fun day, which is something new we're doing this year. In the past, we've had that open to the public where it's another day to come in and check out buses. This year, we're not gonna do that. It's just gonna be the people that have paid for camping and seminars. We get to have just cool. a fun day of activities, people that are have things that they're offering. So it could be yoga. Um, then there's things that are paid. If you wanna do it, we have a rafting company in town that's gonna be doing rafting right from the venue, putting in at the river. Are you serious? I didn't yeah, know about yeah. this. Yeah, that's new. That's like within the last couple of days. I didn't fill you in. Sorry. <laughs> no, and we already talked today. I feel a little bit left. I out. know. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, again, like the, the seminar ticket really is like if you want to come and have the full experience of, of the bus fare, that's the best bang for your buck because it'll yeah. get you a discount <clears throat> on camping as well. Um, and then you get to be a part of the entire event. You also get an additional day of free camping Thursday night. Um, so if you buy camping, you get Thursday for free so that you can come in the day before, get set up and be ready to go in the morning. Uh, we'll have our coffee vendor again for Main Street Coffee here nice. in town. that will have baked goods and coffee in the morning and get you right into the seminar. So, 
Yeah. Getting those, getting those uh, first choice on the camping spots is really cool too. Because, yeah. you know, last year one of my jobs was uh, parking people. And if you get there yeah. early, that's when you get the good spots. I mean, first come, first serve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I just thought of something. What'd you think of? Well, so my buddy today, I said, my buddy from Bomb Snow Magazine in Bozeman, Montana, he did this thing on Instagram where he wanted to give something away today. So he uh-huh. gave away uh, free advertising space to the first person that sent him a direct message. Um, so okay. why don't I do something like that as well? I keep this good thing going. So let's do this. Anybody that is watching this right now, if you okay. buy an educational seminar ticket right now and you check the box that says that you heard about it from Chuck Cassidy, I'm going to, I'm going to comp your, your camping for free. So you buy a seminar ticket now and you get free camping if you're the first one. Yeah. To the first person between here and when I check the orders. Uh, the first person There's that gets 84 gets, of you, <laughs> what's that? There's 84 people watching, so it could be you. Okay. If you hurry up. <laughs> it could be one of the 84 people. The first person that goes and buys a ticket for an educational seminar or two, it doesn't matter. And you check the box. It says you heard it from Chuck Cassidy. I'm going to give you free camping. I'll add that to your order later. So first person, let's, 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 let's give. <laughs> Who's it going to be? It could be you. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, the I can't really stress enough. Like, if if you want to learn about schoolie life, if you've never been in a finished schoolie, um, the bus fair is really it's like really catered to give you a lot of information and to be super helpful for you because you can walk in. How many how many buses are exhibiting this year, Brock? We have up to thirty, and we have a waiting mm-hmm. list. That's pretty big right now. So I have a feeling that even with the yeah. standard dropouts we get from, you know, people breaking down on the way there uh, or life <laughs> events, we're, we're still going to have 30, if not more. So. <laughs> so you could tour 30 buses. You'd have a whole yeah. day without the crowd to tour those buses if you want, right. essentially, right? Which is cool. You have a whole day of seminars led by experts who most of us doing the seminars are there the whole weekend. Like, we're going to yeah. be hanging out, milling around. So I'm not saying you should, but, you know, you could corner me. You could buy me a drink and ask me questions if you wanted. And I'm sure every, everybody who participates this, uh, in this is super friendly. So uh, yeah. you can come hang out. Um, the, the community vibe is really strong. There's going to be really good music. Who, what are the m- music acts this year that we have confirmed so far, Brock? Yeah, so uh, we have that coming out on uh, April 1st. There's, there's oh, going to be a little story that drops that. Okay. So, uh, okay. yeah, uh, we're going to drop our headliner. Yeah, but uh, we have some other really good ones as well. That um, There's one local um, that I found that I'll talk about, Jessie Adele. If you look okay. up on Spotify, I had no idea. She lives here in town. I've known her. Her kid and my kid <laughs> hang out and interact at jujitsu. But I didn't know she was a really good musician, so we've we've just slotted yeah. her for one of the spots for live music. That's so that'll awesome. be fun. Um, okay. And then, hey, don't forget, like last year, you had the experience to go to the the unofficial kickoff party before the event starts at the oh. pub, the corner <laughs> bar karaoke, and yeah. So there's <laughs> yeah. I think that night ended in a pretty rambunctious. Um, version of the red hot chili peppers hit single suck my kiss <laughs> yeah so i guess that's something else that we should talk about right because the, yeah. like other events that i've been to they're either out somewhere on blm land or they're confined yeah. to a certain area but we're in like a little small community park where if you want to go out to the pub you want to go to the bakery you want to go to the post office and pick something up like you're in town and that's kind of the fun thing is you get to have an experience of an event in a small little mountain town yeah that's it's really you know because if you've been to things like schoolie palooza or a lot of these events are in really remote areas and it is kind of a cool take to have something happening where one night you and all your friends who live in rigs can go out on the town uh, yeah, that's or I mean, you don't have to live in a rig. You could be camping in a tent or sleeping in a hotel. But, you know, you can go out on the town and hang out with everybody, which is something that if you're living van life or bus life, um, you don't have a lot of those nights. Typically, you know, you're usually not parking uh, near places you can go out. 
<laughs> yeah. You're out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> usually. I'll, I'll say, you know, one of my favorite memories from the bus fair last year was when we got to see Arbor Season play at the local pub. And it was yeah. you, Luke yeah. from school.com, yeah. um, and a few of us that were all just there hanging out, drinking drinking a beer and listening to music. And it was just good. For yeah, you, it, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I think we call that hanging out. I think that's yeah. what we were doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, without I, Brock, is there anything else we want to tell people about before uh, before I let you get on with the rest of your night? Anything you want to we need to cover? Buy buy your tickets now. They're the the oh, cheapest no. best price they are now. So get them get them now, and they they do go quick as we get closer to the event. So if it's anything you are interested in, um, don't miss out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, there are only so many spots available if you want to be there for camping and all that stuff and get all the amenities and the seminars. Um, yeah. So get on it and buy your tickets now. Um, yeah. And uh, we should talk about Linger Longer real quick because that's a part of it after. And I just yeah. remembered another thing, Brock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So because Linger we're... Longer um, yeah, yeah. is after the event. So a lot, of, a lot of people are traveling from all over, right, to get to the bus fair. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they realize that they're in this small little cool town with a lot of hiking, waterfalls, recreation, rivers, world class mountain biking. So people kind of started to request, like, where do I camp after the event so I can check out this little town of Oak Ridge? So we worked with the city to extend our rental of the park so that um, we have a limited, a very small, limited amount of spots for people that want to stay uh, for three days after the event. So. That, That's as awesome. you know, like we went to the river and we went, yeah. you know, swimming. We, you know, we ran into other friends that were up there fishing and, and whatnot. Yeah, so did. it's just a real laid back time outside of the event afterwards. So that's something that people should consider if they are going to come to the event. Maybe you get that time off a little bit longer to just stay and hang out because it's it's fun. There's a lot to do around here in Oak Ridge and you'll be bummed if you just come in for the event and skedaddle right after. No doubt, and the, the event takes place, this park, it's literally up against the river. So yeah. camping, hanging out there is, it's really nice. I'll just say that, it's very chill. And the temperatures that time of year, they're freaking mild, it's nice. It's not super hot, it's not super cold, uh, usually sunny, you know, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The thing, Brock, that I wanted to mention that I forgot is we're going to have, so Van Life Pride is having an event oh, yes. following the bus fair. Is it the weekend yeah. right after? No, it's uh, July 9th through the 12th, and it's called Camp Pride, and it's in okay. Walton, Oregon, which will be about an hour and a half away from where Oak Ridge is, but it's a it's an all-adult, 21-plus uh, event. Uh, camp for um, anybody within the LGBTQ plus community. So uh, a yeah. really fun event going on right after ours. So, yeah. So that's happening. And we're going to even have, I think right now we're going to have ambassadors or representatives from yeah. Van Life Pride hanging out um, for the bus fair too. Um, yep. You know, because we've got, you know, we're supporting all these groups. We would love to have them like a bunch of them there for us, but they have to put on their own festival, which, you know, that's a good yeah. excuse. <laughs> it's a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> We've got two exhibitors that are going to kind of represent uh, Van Life Pride while they're there. And they're going to do this really cool thing called Cheers Queers uh, Social yeah. Hour on Sunday. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Part of Sunday Fun Day. We've got a lot of cool yeah. stuff. And like, this is what we have now. We're only going to be adding stuff, you know? Yes. That's what we do. We're going to be adding stuff. So Brock, um, man, I think we I think we covered everything and then some. But thank yeah. you for uh, for joining us. If you're interested in the bus fair, it's thebusfair.com. That's in the screen thing there. And Brock just announced the first person to buy a ticket to the seminar today will get their camping pass, not just discounted, which you normally would, but free, free, totally <laughs> free. And for all you other slow pokes who are going to buy their seminar ticket after this. You do get a discount still on your camping. And if you buy two seminar passes, they're, they're both discounted. Uh, yep. You can't afford not to come is what I'm trying to say. So just, we'd love to see you come hang out with us, you know? <laughs> mm. 
Well, Brock, thanks for joining, man. And uh, we're going to let you go, but we'll see you again soon. I'm sure of it. And if not, I'm at least going to see you in three months and like almost exactly three months. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go and I'm going to pack my schoolie and I'm going to go <laughs> camping on White Pass, Oregon, and I'm going to learn how to tele ski. This professional, oh, ex professional snowboarder is going to put on two planks. <laughs> wow. I've got a pair of Telemark skis sitting in a closet in Colorado that I was supposed to try this year. <sighs> well, maybe next year I can give you some lessons. Yeah, next year we could be beginners together, Brock. That'd be fun. There we go. Well, I'm going to go pack my bus, dude. Thank you All so right. much for having me on. Um, this yeah, has man. been awesome. I, I appreciate you. I love you, dude. And uh, I'll, you, I'll talk Brock. to you soon. All right. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brock Butterfield. Brock, we will see you when we see you. Okay. Well, welcome back to the party. Um, here we are. And uh, this is that part of the show <laughs> where I'm going to open it up to kind of a, a Q&A situation. We're going to close it with a tool du jour, a very special tool du jour that I'm a really big fan of that I just got, that I've wanted for years. And yeah, if go ahead, if in the live chat, I think it's off on this side here, <laughs> go ahead and put in your questions and I'm going to point my attention here and let's see what we got here if people have any questions for yours truly and if not i'll just go home you know <laughs> um okay here we go oh yeah we got nomadic alpha alex is gonna be there a lot of great people are gonna be up at the bus fair like i think i have another camera angle i could show you let's see do do do, do. not that guy this guy here we go hey come on over I almost gave away the tool du jour, you know, that would have been awkward. Can we point this up at my face? Here we go. It's kind of what it's like to be my computer in a way, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, very, I don't know if I'm very good at this YouTube thing. Here, there, there we go. It's a webcam. It's all crooked. We'll do it live. There we go. <laughs> That's a hilarious angle, but I want you to be able to see my face while I'm looking at your comments here. Um, <clears throat> all right, here's some cool stuff we got. Um, hard pass on that event. I hope that was a joke, Michelle Loves Freedom, because it's going to be awesome. Um, Brock is not the guy who was helping Liz build out that library room. Brock lives in Oregon, and Alyssa lives in Colorado. Um, <clears throat> has anyone built an all-electric schoolie yet, as far as... The living accommodations go, people have definitely built out, you know, all electric school buses. What's going on there? That, uh, can I get the, the good camera angle? There we go. People have definitely built out school buses where all of the interior stuff is electric. Um, that's pretty easy to do. But to build a all electric school bus where the drivetrain is electric, that's also being done right now. It's very expensive, but they have really short ranges. So if you're gonna do that, you need a way to recharge it because recharging off of solar for a battery bank that large. I figured it out once. It would take you a month to recharge that battery bank and you could only drive, I think around 160 miles. And that's if you don't have the heaters off in like, you know, best possible range scenario. So probably not gonna happen anytime soon. <clears throat> um, would you ever consider putting an exhaust brake on your bus? Why or why not? I would definitely do it. I would. I don't think there's a good reason not to do it, other than the fact that it, it's kind of expensive, you know, and you have to install that on the bus for you. Um, what else do we got here? Get a new receiver hitch? I have not. If you watched my last video, that hitch failure. Um, I am currently figuring out the best way to approach that. I'm, I can tell you now that the past receiver hitch was a class four. Um, the next one will be a class five. And I'm debating whether or not I try to find an off-the-shelf hitch that matches my frame rail dimensions or if I just make something. And my friend Luke, excuse me, my friend Luke at schoolie.com, he's got the ability to like water jet, laser cut, CNC, anything. So I'm toying with the idea of like making a design and sending it to him and having him make it for me. But uh, long story short, if you haven't seen that video, I had a trailer that I was towing rip the receiver hitch off the back of my bus. And my new sort of approach here, I still don't know how much the tongue weight was on that hitch, which is a bummer. But my new approach to the trailer thing is I want the receiver that I mount on my bus, it's gonna be a two and a half inch square receiver instead of a two inch. 
And it's going to be so solid that the only way that is coming off of my bus is if that part of my bus comes off. You know what I'm saying? I do not want to have the weak link in a trailer towing setup be on my bus. I want it to be the trailer. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, that was terrible. That was terrifying. <clears throat> um, here we go. Let's see. Ba -ba -ba. Is there a brand of puck lights you recommend? No, not really. I don't have a particular brand. What if I what if I turn this camera a little bit more? There we go. I don't really have a particular brand of puck lights. I get on the Amazon. I'm always looking for stuff that has the color temperature in the 2700K to 3000K range. I don't like the blue, but that's a personal thing. I don't like the blue lights. Um, <clears throat> let's see, be out there and through. Okay, here we go. <laughs> uh, non schooly question. What your favorite types of beer? You know, right now, Zoe, I've been doing a lot of cider. Um, I have drank plenty of beer in my life. Love beer, no hard feelings toward beer. But I've been doing this uh, Odyssey hard cider that they sell down where the shop is, is pretty rural. So the nearest place to go buy stuff is this mercantile down the road, and they stock this. Awesome cider, I'm a pretty big fan, but I like dry ciders, you know, right now, who knows. Um, <clears throat> let's see, let's see, see, see. Hey, yo, I've got the bug to plan a bus van build over the next year of school with my dad. What's the standard interior height of buses? Well, Keith, they, it really varies. Um, anywhere from some short buses have an interior height that's under six feet to as the highest I've seen on a bus was either 6'6 six, six or 6'7. Six, um, I don't think I've ever seen higher than that on a school bus. So they don't all need a roof raise. Depends on what your interior height needs are. But a lot of them do, especially if you plan on adding insulation to your floor or ceiling, you know? <clears throat> what else is happening? So here we go. <clears throat> Let's see, have you ever done anything with an RVC, RVC data bus in a conversion? I think you're talking about like that uh, that CAN bus protocol. Um, I haven't done that yet because the only stuff that I use that I like to use that uses that protocol or has the ability to um, is a, a tank level monitoring system made by a company called C Level, and or no, it's the name of the system is C Level. It's made by Garnet, but only recently did they add the ability to communicate over that protocol. Otherwise, there's really no reason to because what are we? What, what are the main things we're trying to monitor? You know, most of it has to do with the electrical system. So the Victron things, they have their own kind of CAN bus network happening. Um, but you know, if you want to include tank monitoring in that, there are adapters now that will convert the sea level stuff to something that can be read by the Victron gear. Uh, so that's cool, but I don't really see a need to expand it beyond that for most of the basic stuff that 99% of the people I design systems for are doing. But, you know, that's not to say there isn't a lot of really cool stuff you can do with those types of networks, no doubt. Um, <clears throat> I think it's a small group of people who are nerdy enough like me and maybe like you to really get into that, but it's amazing what you can do. And there are companies like Garmin, a good friend of mine, Sam, He's working with Garmin to develop some really amazing technology that involves integrating all of this stuff together. Uh, it's really cool. Honestly, a lot of it is, it's not necessarily over my head, it's just not stuff I've had a chance to dive in and like really understand. But uh, yeah, I hope that answers your question. I don't know what that really means. <clears throat> um, Beth, do you think three inches of XPS foam in the free float floor is enough for sub-zero temps with dual diesel heaters? Uh, it definitely, like, it is, no doubt. Your floor temperatures aren't going to be, um, the floor is always the coldest part, right? So your floor temperatures aren't going to ever be that warm, no matter what you do. But three inches, if you're going to be sub-zero, that would be probably the minimum, I would suggest. And, you know, if... <laughs> It's very expensive, but if you can do a diesel-based um, in-floor heating system, that is like the really only guaranteed way to have warm floors in any rig, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but if you've got, if you don't have the money to do that, and those systems, you know, they easily cost seven to twelve thousand dollars just for the materials, depending on which ones you do. So if you don't have that, um, you know, 
dual diesel heaters down low, always good. Three inches of insulation, also good. And then, you know, get a nice pair of slippers <laughs> and some, some wool socks or something because the floor is always going to be chilly. Um, it's, that's just kind of the way it is because you have all, all that airflow under the bus pulling heat out from under it. So really, instead of having the ground as you would in a normal house, which the ground is almost never getting as cold as the air around it. Instead of the ground, you literally just have the air. That's the same reason why bridges and overpasses when you're driving, they, if they're wet, they will be the first places that freeze. It's because they don't have any of that warmth coming up from the ground to help keep them from freezing. <clears throat> Here we go. What else do we got? Uh, <clears throat> uh, bathroom build theories. Oh man, I've got a lot of build theories around that, but in, in general, the bathroom situation, like I really believe in prefab shower pans, um, per, just personally. And I also, if you I like tile a lot and I like epoxy grout. And outside of that, it's all very, it's very case and site specific as far as what the best approach is when you're doing a bathroom. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, here's a good question. So we got a 99 GMC cutaway short bus, classic. Uh, the middle base flooring looks aluminum and has some bounce unlike the sides. Will the purple insulation you recommend support the floor? So this is, this is a good moment for me to mention this. Um, we, did a, we did my typical glue down floor system on um, of the bus right behind me, or in front of me, and it was a cutaway build on a Chevy or GMC, it's the same chassis. And the floor in that, it's corrugated, so it's got these ridges. And what Brianna and I noticed um, is that that floor, the metal pan there, does have some give. I'm not sure that framing the floor would get rid of the give there. It would definitely add rigidity. I don't know if it would add the give if, <clears throat> or get rid of the give, given that, you know, <clears throat> we only did a one inch of insulation. So if you put a one inch thick floor joist, it's not really gonna do much for you. But we noticed that because there were spots, there were high spots in the floor where the glue had failed it wasn't the glue that failed, it was because the floor had been painted by the previous owner of this bus. And the paint they used did not adhere well to the floor. And so the glue that we put down stuck to the paint, and it stuck to the paint, in, in our hypothesis at least, in my hypothesis, it stuck to the paint, great, but that paint came off the floor. So we found ourselves in a situation where down the middle, the foam and the plywood was truly floating. The glue was no longer holding it down. So luckily, because there was only an inch of insulation in this build, we were just able to add a bunch of self-tapping screws and the floor is totally rock solid now. But once we fixed that problem, we noticed when I walk around in there, even though everything is super tight together, there is still a bit of give in the floor and that's because the metal floor pan underneath, um, it's got some give in it. So. That's a long-winded answer to your question, but that's something that I've been thinking a lot about lately because I haven't seen that much. And to be honest with you, um, the GMC or Chevy cutaways are, I've only done a conversion, off the top of my head, I really think I've only done one full build in one. And the flooring in that one was also tricky. So there you go. <clears throat> that's a whole lot. Does that make sense? That's a lot of stuff. Um, all right, here we go. Is a 1986 International 1800 too old to tow? Michelle, that would depend on what the motor and the transmission are. It's definitely, um, the age really doesn't matter. It's really about what's the equipment that you have on it. Um, <clears throat> Pintle hitches are very cool, big rolling home, but they do limit what you can tow. Um, here we go. Beth uh, Mickles, I think is how you'd say it. Two and a half inch Kurt class five commercial duty. That's what I want. Um, Beth, do you want to put, do you have a link or something <laughs> you can share? I don't know if you can share a link unless you're a moderator, but um, yeah, I want one that's going to fit an international 3800 series frame. Uh, Mustache Mike, did we get our third bus? Yeah, we did. We got our third bus. Um, that went off honestly, without a hitch. We took it immediately to get new tires and uh, drove it from just outside of Sacramento all the way up here, north of Seattle, no problem. 
which is what we expected. That's a very cool bus. Um, I did record that. We'll see if we make a video about that or not. But that was a uh, five window Collins cutaway bus built on a Ford E450 platform with a 7.3 power stroke. It's a 1998, which some may say is one of the better years for that because there's just zero emissions on it anywhere. And that's really cool. Uh, and it's only got, I think, 174,000 miles on it. We just got an alignment done on it. It's got new brakes, new tires. And uh, we're trying to figure out how far to take that before we offer that up for sale. I think that's going to be the first bus that we sell of the three because that's the one that we went down there to buy originally before we bought the other two by accident. Um, but I, we're talking right now, trying to figure out how much work we want to do to it. Like, definitely going to gut it. Um, we might go ahead and skin over the sides, do the window deletes, put in a new subfloor, and then uh, maybe get it painted. That's the one that we're on the fence about. We've, there's a great shop that'll paint it. Do we paint it before we sell it, or do we sell it as is and give people the option to pay for the paint job? I mean, the, the paint jobs that we get are professionally done, they're warrantied, but they are expensive. So I'm trying to figure out that sweet spot there. So stay tuned though, because that'll be coming up for sale here hopefully soon. <laughs> we have, there's a lot of money tied up in those buses right now. <clears throat> um, any experience with Atwood furnaces versus diesel heater? Well, Amber, if I had a diesel rig that had a diesel fuel tank, I would do the diesel heater, no question. But the Atwood furnace, they were great. I had a, a Toyota Sunraider motorhome that had the Atwood propane furnace. That thing was a champ. I camped in that well. It was, the lowest temp I saw was like, I think four below zero, and that was always keeping me warm. <clears throat> What's the best way to attach a deck to the back of my short bus and still have a hitch available? Well, Diana, um, if it were me, what I would want to do is have a structural way of extending the frame for the full length of your deck. So if you're going to add a deck that's three feet long, extend the frame by three feet. If I was going to be extending the frame, ideally I would get some C channel, which is usually the shape of your frame that is the same profile and matches your existing frame. Two of those, three feet long. I would probably butt weld them, you know, very nicely together and then add a gusset plate on each side with probably six half inch bolts on each side of that splice, you know, almost like a splint. So you've got your frame rail here and on the inside you've got a plate and a plate and then three, you've got six bolts on this side and six bolts on this side. <clears throat> make it super strong, extend the frame, and then put the hitch at the end of your new frame. That's what I would do. I am not an engineer, and as you saw, if you haven't already, I just recently had a pretty traumatic experience with a trailer hitch ripping off of my bus. So uh, build it strong, overbuild it, you know? <clears throat> That's what I would do. Um, Deborah, you had a, a chat with me a couple of weeks ago You've got the Anchor 3800. Yes, I remember using an AC to DC converter for your DC wiring. Could you please suggest an AC to DC converter for you? Um, Deborah? I don't have one, a specific model off the top of my head I could suggest, but there are a lot of options out there. What you're really doing is you're shopping for a power supply. You're shopping for a 12 volt DC power supply that runs on 120 volts. And I would honestly go to the Amazon and I would type that in. You want one that has a 12 volt output of, I would say around 50 amps. That would be the max, which is around 600 watts or so total. And I would find the highest rated one you can on Amazon and probably buy that one. I think there's a, a bunch of options out there, but I think that's what I would do. Sorry, I don't have a specific model in mind, um, but I don't. <laughs> um, how does one, Oh, here we go. How does one navigate the Victron wormhole? I've tried myself and I'm close to just contracting out. Steve Inman. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by Victron wormhole, but I'm guessing maybe you mean like figuring out all of the bits and bobs that you need to make a Victron system happen that does all the stuff you want it to do. And it is a deep ecosystem of products that it just honestly takes a lot of time to know everything that's available. The thing that I do as a Victron dealer, if, if you want help designing a system, you can always book a time. You can go to chuckcassidy.com and schedule a consultation. And I do this probably a few times a month where I will talk on the phone for an hour to the person. We will talk about their electrical needs, design a system for them, 
and then I will give you a list of all of the Victron components that you'll need uh, to make that system real. If you want to buy them, I can sell them to you. I sell them at the minimum advertised price that Victron allows, and the tax and shipping is included. Uh, so that should be as cheap as you can find it anywhere. And you order from me, I ship it to you. You then have a complete system that has all the bits and pieces that I know you need that will work together. This includes obviously the inverter, the charge controller, the big stuff, but then all the little things like the, distrib the DC distribution, your main fuse, your on off switch, your step down converter from tw 24 to 12 volts, um, and then the touch screen so that you can network it all together, the servo, which is kind of like the brain box that you connect together with these networking cables. I include the networking cables, the fuses, all the little stuff. Um, and I can even, you know, if we want to talk about wire, I can spec the wire and put together a whole kit for you. That is um, probably the easiest way to get started because you'll learn a lot more, uh, in my opinion, by doing one system, you know, and, and having someone say, here, this is what you need. And then you learn how the system goes together and then it gets planted in your head how it all works. It's really hard, at least for me, to learn whole systems of components and things um, like in a theoretical realm, you know, I, I'm a hands-on kind of person. Give me a system to build, give me all the parts, let me build it, and then I could replicate that. Now, you're probably not going to be doing more than one solar system, so uh, maybe all the more reason not to spend time <laughs> trying to learn about it when you could have someone say, here, this is what you need, this is what you need to know, you're all set. So I hope that helps you. If you want to hire me for that, you can go to my website, chuckcassidy.com, book a consultation. Hopefully that would help you. Um, I'm only going to go another five minutes or so. <clears throat> Time flies, I'll tell you what. Um, whew, and we're going to just do rapid fire. We're going to cruise here. Um, uh, oh man, this is great. Okay, so it's all happening. You guys are giving me so many questions. Um, PEX lines, plumbing, radiator fluid around the floor. You could certainly do that. I would use oxygen barrier PEX if you're going to do that. Uh, you got a web, Kathleen, you got a web also hydronic heater you want to use as an engine heater, floor heating, and water heater. Any suggestions of YouTube videos that help you with that? Uh, Kathleen, I have built that system before. It's complicated. You're going to need heat, you're going to need flat plate heat exchangers, some pumps, some thermostatic mixing valves, but it can totally be done. Um, I can't talk about it now because there's just, it's such a deep thing. And I didn't, at the time that we did that build in question, I didn't have a YouTube channel, so I didn't, I didn't record it. But... I wish I could recommend something to you. Uh, Troy Ria, or Ray, I don't know how you say it. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, I really appreciate that. That's totally going to buy me dinner tonight. Um, that's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, Andrew Musselman, also, thanks for two bucks. That's cool. I, I'm glad that it was a good answer. <laughs> um, any opinions on a 90, 90, 37 foot Wayne DT 466 no rust Cali bus? No, I would buy it. That sounds freaking awesome. Uh, where do you recommend putting the mini split unit? Under the bus or on the back? I, the ugliest place to put it is on the back. That's probably the safest and best performance place to put it, but it is the ugliest place. If you put it underneath, um, you just have to be careful because you want to keep it really clean and you want to keep it protected. You know what I'm saying? Make sure the airflow is good. If you cannot find Baltic birch, would maple be a good choice? Yeah, sure. The main thing, like, don't get hung up too much because the main thing about the Baltic birch plywood that I like is that all of the cores, all of the layers of that plywood are Baltic birch. They're all the same. It's called veneer core. Whereas typical Baltic birch plywood that you're gonna buy at Home Depot, only the top and bottom plies are Baltic birch. And the middle is kind of like filler wood. It's usually some type of soft wood. And that's a bummer because if you want, I like the structural and fastener holding benefits of Baltic birch as much as I like the visual appeal of it. So to me, one of the big reasons of using Baltic birch isn't just because it's pretty, it's because it's a very strong type of plywood. And that's what I really like about it. And it holds fasteners like screws super well. So if you're at Home Depot and you're shopping and they don't have Baltic birch, well, they're not going to, I can guarantee you that Home Depot and Lowe's are not going to have veneer core Baltic birch plywood. You're going to have to talk to a wood distributor if you want to find that type of plywood. So if you're at Home Depot and you're seeing Baltic birch versus maple plywood, they're probably internally pretty much identical, I would suggest. So it's really just an, an aesthetic judgment. 
Um, if you're buying this wood for anything that doesn't need to have an aesthetic quality to it, there's really no reason to buy the Home Depot type of Baltic birch or maple plywood where only the veneer is that type of wood and the core of the plywood is a lesser type of softwood. You might as well just buy the cheaper plywood that's all softwood, you know what I'm saying? So I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, <clears throat> bad pun without a hitch. Nice, we're gonna fly. Uh, Ray, do you recommend a full solar setup with all separate components or an all-in-one? Uh, Ray, the vast majority of applications, I would recommend a component-based solar system. The all-in-ones just aren't there in terms of the efficiency and the upgradability. And there's different types of all-in-ones. There's like things like the portable power stations that companies like Anchor, Blue Eddy, whatever make. And then there's the all-in-ones that companies like GrowWatt and stuff make. And neither of those, I think, are an ideal application uh, unless you know exactly what you're doing. The grow watt stuff, those all-in-ones, the, the big problem there is they just have really high self-consumption. So just by being on, a lot of those units will use between 50 and 80 watts just continuously being on. And they have to be on because they're your charge controller and your inverter. Whereas like a Victron Multi Plus 2 inverter, if you do that, it's only using 11 watts of power. And the big problem, the big thing that you have to solve when you design a solar system for a bus or anything is you always have to make more power than you use. Ideally, like the minimum would be making 125% of what your daily usage is so that if you start with discharge batteries, not only can you meet your daily loads, but you can also recharge those batteries as you go. And the problem if you have inefficient hardware is that it's always gonna be consuming power and the problem is there's only so much roof space you have to generate power. The big limiting factor is how many panels do you have on your roof? And if you can't get enough panels on your roof to cancel out your daily usage, then you're screwed unless you figure out a way to limit your daily usage and having high efficiency components, inverters, charge controllers, and things like that that have low self-consumption or low idle consumption is a key component of your whole solar system package. I hope that makes sense, but that is one of the bigger advantages of using Victron equipment is their low idle consumption um, power usage. <sighs> um, do you think 316th rivets are okay for a window delete? Absolutely. Uh, I was told there's a place to get squeeze parts in Sacramento. Need two windows. I sure don't know that one, Michelle, I'm sorry. Um, 37 foot Bluebird 59, oh, 59 mechanical Cummins AT545 transmission. That's a pretty small transmission uh, for a bus that's 37 feet long. So that would be my only hesitation there. But an all mechanical Cummins is cool and you can always upgrade your transmission down the road if you want. Are the RV windows you use in your build single or dual pane? I use dual pane RV windows. Um, Beth, I'll send you the part number. Oh, cool. Thank you very much. You can send it to info at chuckcassidy.com. Uh, do you think it's strong enough to tow a vehicle? Uh, that Cummins, no, um, I, I would be hesitant to tow a vehicle, not because of the engine, but because of the transmission, because that's already a big bus. If that was like a 30 foot bus or a 28 foot bus with that transmission, I would say, yeah, tow a vehicle. But since it's a whole 10 feet longer than that, I'm hesitant. That sounds like it would be a lot of strain on the transmission. Uh, here we go. Wow. We're, we're cruising. Um, when I hit, oh, I found the service manuals for my truck. Oh, nice. Service manuals are awesome. I love service manuals. Uh, when I hit the brakes on my bus, I hear a loud clunk noise. Any idea what I should look into? Thank you. Yeah, um, it's most likely a worn suspension component. If it's coming from the front, I would say it could be a worn out kingpin or a sp uh, leaf spring bushing possibly a wheel bearing, but those would be the places I would check there. If it's coming from the back, it's probably a leaf spring bushing in the back. I'm just guessing, because I don't know anything else about your bus. There's a very good chance it could be a part of the brake system, but usually that clunking sound when you hit the brakes is your tires are you know, going from being neutral, just rolling, to stopping, and that changes the forces on your suspension. If you have a worn out bushing on your leaf springs, which is what hold your axles on, that even just a tiny, you know, uh, a few thousandths of an inch <clears throat> is enough motion to create a clunking sound. So it could mean that your kingpins, your bearings, or your shackle bushings are worn out. Um, either way, take it to a shop and have them give it a once over because almost every school bus needs a fair bit of suspension maintenance. Uh, instead of don't frame like an idiot, maybe we'll get a video about towing with buses. Yeah, like don't, don't tow like an idiot. 
<laughs> um, <clears throat> Uh, for a rear deck, if you sacrifice part of your interior move, oh yeah, yeah, totally. You could always move your back wall forward to keep your, you know, if your bus is like this, boom, 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 move that back wall forward and have a little deck there. Uh, Miguel, thank you for the $10 super chat. That's really cool and I appreciate that you appreciate me. Feels good. Um, that's, that's your first super ever is what YouTube is telling me. Um, don't know if you'll make it down this far, but do you have thoughts on installing a fold-out deck to the side of a bus? Uh, Zoe, that's a good question. I do have thoughts. I designed and was ready to build one for a client, and then COVID hit. They lost money, and or they lost their jobs, ran out of money, and had to cancel finishing their build. Um, the main thing, of course, to worry about is you can't exceed the maximum legal width, so it's got to be pretty low profile when it folds up. And when it does fold up, you know, for me to rest easy driving that thing, I would want really solid, some type of really solid safe latching mechanism so you know it's never gonna flop down into oncoming traffic. And then also, when it does fold down, if it's the type of setup where it's gonna use legs to support it when it folds down, you want those legs to be adjustable because more often than not, you're never gonna be putting that down on a perfectly flat surface. You're probably gonna be putting it down in a campsite or somewhere and, um, you'll want a way to adjust that. But those are kind of the only thoughts that I have at the moment off the top of my head. It's easy to make one of those that's gonna be super heavy, um, which you don't wanna do. <clears throat> um, ba, ba, ba. How much is the hour solar consult? So if you call and we do an hour long consult, it's 100 bucks. And I pretty much can guarantee you I'll save you 100 bucks in frustration and probably taxes and shipping if you buy the stuff through me. Um, here we go. Oh, nice. You got, you discovered my channel a week ago. Oh, I, welcome, welcome. You know, I'm so sorry. You're never going to get the time back that you spend watching my channel. <laughs> but hopefully I'm saving you time in the process, right? That's the, that's the goal. <clears throat> uh, put me on when you fall asleep at night, you know. Looking at options for floor insulation. Um, yeah. Two inch spray foam for the walls and ceilings. Um, considering we're planning on using two inch frame as long as do you? I don't really know. That's an interesting question. Oh, do you think a combination? There we go. A foam board with one inch OSB, plywood for the floor. Yeah, I think that that would sound, that sounds great. I think, to, uh, to me, two inches is the minimum. You know, if you get two inches, you're, you're pretty good, pretty much going to be good no matter where you're at. It might be cold sometimes, but you'll be okay. Um, <clears throat> Here we go. I have one. I can't get it registered. I want to sell. Oh, you want to sell that bus. Okay, well, you know, put it for sale. Uh, bus Life Adventure has a good classified section. Uh, can I burn Jet A in a Duramax with some Delete Co? I'm not really sh sure exactly what you're asking, but if you're asking if you can run Jet Fuel, Jet A fuel in a Duramax, I would think you can because I think that's just a more refined form of diesel. It's really close to kerosene. So I don't think there's a reason that that would be a problem, but I'm definitely not an expert and I haven't done that. Uh, I would think it's just a nicer type of diesel you could use. Um, have I ever used the side emergency door as a garage? Uh, I've definitely done that for people, yeah. It's a great way to get access in there. Um, max with eight foot six, that's right. You don't want auto deploy wings, yeah. We don't want that. Oh, hey, what's up, Wes? Transcend Existence. You're tuning in just as I'm about to say goodbye, but I was talking about you earlier because we were talking about the bus fair, and uh, he's going to be there, everybody. <laughs> At least that's what I heard last time we talked. <laughs> um, that's going to be an awesome seminar that he's teaching. Uh, all right. Rewatch so many videos, they never seem to get old. I don't know what disease you have, but uh, all the best in your recovery, and I hope you find a better way to spend your time. Uh, oh, crowning around, Brad, what's up? It's so good to see you here, man. We need to talk on the phone soon. Um, number one diesel has reduced the oil and fuel. Oh, yeah, there we go. Here, so Big Rolling Home has some insight on this. Um, reduced oil in the fuel. I'm not really sure what that means. Like, hopefully there's no oil in the fuel. We're talking, I think, lubricity. And my understanding was that the lubricity in diesel went down. It's not based on the grade of refinement refinement happening that happened when we moved to the ultra low sulfur diesel um for some reason i have it in my mind that the sulfur was actually 
part of a lubricant in the fuel, the same way like leaded gasoline was supposed to be better for or easier on the valves. The valves, I think, didn't need to be hardened or something. Anyway, same type of story there, but I could be mistaken, um, and I probably am. So there we go. Lubricity. Okay, so I am using the right words. Great, everybody. Um, okay, I'm going to answer these last two questions, and I'm out of here. Uh, Forever Phantom. Do you have a Gillig a Gillig a Gillig Phantom? Is that your bus? Very cool. That's a cool bus. If that's what your screen name is alluding to. Um, Zoe, yeah, we can definitely talk at the bus fair. We're, we're gonna be hanging out. Um, you guys are great. Thank you for your generosity tonight. <laughs> um, all right, wondering how much you do in terms of deleting electrical wires from the stock bus. Oh man, Garrett, that's a great question. Um, there's a lot of wire that you can remove. It depends on the bus, all the features that came with it. Did it have camera systems, things like that. But in a perfect world, if I am allowed to do whatever I want, I love basically going up to where the wires come in that are the light wires for the stop, tail, turn, reverse, whatever. Um, cutting those where they come up into the bus and then getting rid of everything else, like completely getting rid of it, making sure I don't screw myself over with deleting interlocks that will prevent the bus from starting and all of that. And then just run a brand new cable that carries those wires to the back for those tail lights and then rewiring the clearance lights and just starting from there. Getting rid of all the heater wires, emergency exits, speaker wires, interlock wires, camera wires, vandal lock wires, just any, any wires. I try to get rid of all of them. Uh, to me, the main benefit of that, aside from knowing exactly how your electrical system works, is that if you ever need to go in and repair or replace something in your bus, you're not navigating a maze of spaghetti, you know, because this ain't a pasta shop. <laughs> All right, I need to go. Um, it's time, it's time to wrap this up. Thank you so much. There's 121 of you here. Thank you so much for joining. It means a lot to me. I'm gonna try to be more regular with this, but no promises. Uh, please come hang out with me at the bus fair, thebusfair.com, love to see you there. And in the meantime, everybody have a great week. If you want access to an amazing uh, wealth of knowledge, you can always join my Discord uh, through the Patreon link. And if you want my help directly, go to chuckcassidy.com. You can literally buy my time and fill me with all of the questions you have and just soak up all the knowledge I can give you. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I'm going to sign off, and uh, we'll see you next time. Finish. <laughs>